Hi, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on Mikhailov's monuments. I'm Krishna. I'm based in India. I'm talking to you on behalf of the international team of Mikhailov's monuments today. Uh, you, some of you might have heard of Mikhailov's monuments. Some of you might have participated in it. Some of you might have involved in some form of organizing. Uh, this presentation is mainly oriented towards new teams or new countries that would like to set up and participate in Wikilaw's monuments on behalf of the country. But it will also be helpful for anyone who is interested in Wikilaw's monuments in general, how the campaign works, what, why we are doing what we're doing, and the overall setup of it. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so one of the missions, of the, like not one of the missions, but one of the primary missions is that we help to document all the built cultural heritage, all the knowledge on wikis, which is parallel to the overall mission of the Wiki movement, which is that everyone can fill in some of all knowledge. Whereas we have a specific mission, which is that all built cultural heritage is documented on Wikimedia Commons or any other projects in any other form that is possible. So how do we do it? We have a photo competition which is annual, uh, global, federated, and low barrier. So what do these mean? It's annual, uh, so we have the campaign running for the past 10 years. It's been we have, it's been over a decade since it started. Uh, it happens every year annually in September and October. Um, the week keeps, sometimes we keep changing the campaign months due to different uh, global events, such as the pandemic, uh, for example. And it's global. All countries are welcome to take part in the campaign. Uh, if you have a team, there is no, uh, all countries are, um, they can set up their own campaigns and run the killers monuments in their countries. It is federated. Um, by, by federated, we mean that we have an international team which will talk more about the structure, but which we only set the broad framework and make sure things are running and keep everything coordinated. But the core part of the campaign, which is uh, running the campaigns nationally and getting the uploads and uh, getting the winners at national levels that is done by national teams. And national teams are very free and flexible to have their own adjustments to the, um, you know, the way they want to design things, the way that they don't want to run the campaign, uh, do the outreach, it's all up to the national teams. Uh, so that makes it a very federated and distributed model. And it's low barrier because um, just imagine uploading, um, because monuments has, is proven to be very friendly for newcomers who have not been who have not contributed previously to Wikilaw's uh, wiki media projects at all. Uh, so fair, uploading a photograph is fairly easy than, for example, writing a whole article. Uh, and because we have a lot of things autofilled uh, with the help of lists of monuments, it becomes a fairly easy and low barrier entry point into Wikimedia projects uh, for newcomers. And of course, it's a photo competition that makes it uh, fun and we, that helps to attract a lot of newcomers. So we have this whole campaign set up. Um, and so why are we doing this? Of course, we have the main mission, which is, of course, we want to document all the cultural, build cultural heritage, um, and then increase contributions into Wikimedia projects, such as Wikimedia Commons, primarily Wikimedia Commons because it's a photo competition, but uh, we can, a lot of people, they come to Wikimedia Commons, they upload the photographs, they get started with their contributions, but also migrate to other projects such as Wikipedia or Wikidata uh, if they're interested in. And keep engaging the local Wikimedia communities. Uh, this happens to outreach. So when, whenever a country organizes a Wikilaw's monuments, they do a lot of activities such as photo walks, workshops, which help in turn to keep the communities engaged and enhance them. So as I've mentioned, it's a federated model. We have different, we have several countries taking part every year. Uh, this, like in the past few years, is somewhere between 40 to 50. Uh, we have, we're trying to improve this count in this year and the next few years. Um, so the first year it was only one country and then it was Europe and then we, it went international from late 2012. Um, and so, it doesn't necessarily mean that all countries, uh, for example, if you participate this year, that you have to participate again. Uh, it is up to the bandwidth of the national kings if they want to do it a certain year or not. Um, some countries do it every year, some alternate, some uh, do it whenever they have the necessary bandwidth to organize the campaign. 
and a quick overview of the uploaders and newcomers we have. Uh, so the blue lines are the total uploaders and the red ones are the uh, newcomers of them. And I was mentioning before that it's a low barrier competition and this definitely proves that uh, it's low barrier because we have almost 60 to 70 percent of our, of all our participants newcomers. Um, people like we might have anywhere between eight to 10, 15,000 of uploaders and uh, at least 60, 70 percent of them are newcomers. Um, so this was very interesting and uh, exciting about Wikilow's monuments. So that's a broad overview of what it is and how things are. And like, so how does this work? Um, and, and like in, in the setup of it. So we have the natural organizers uh, who do the, I would say the core work of the campaign uh, globally. Of course, they indirectly interact with the participants at national level um, and with the support of the national team, uh, like the uh, national, sorry, national entities such as like maybe some NGOs or cultural organizations, which can help to promote uh, different, like different teams have different partnerships with uh, different entities such as UNESCO, other European, other uh, cultural organizations at international and national level. Uh, and then we have uh, as international team. Um, so they, we'll talk more about the responsibilities of the international team, but uh, and the national teams. But what we try to do is set a broad framework um, that everyone can function within uh, and have a fair participation among all countries. But it's quite flexible, uh, and we'll see more of that. So how do we share responsibilities? Uh, what does the international team do, and what do you like if you're Signing up to be a national organizer, what responsibilities do you have? So we have so the entire team says the overall framework. By overall framework, uh, it means when the campaign runs. Like for example, this year it's September and October. When twenty when and during before that it was uh, just September and during the pandemic we thought it should it was, it's good to have some flexibility uh, because the situation of the pandemic situation is different in different countries, and organizers uh, would like that flexibility to have choose a month that's most suitable for them. Um, supporting and onboarding new teams if there are any issues with technical, non technical, um, and helping new teams to set up campaigns. And we also do the development of montage, which is the photo jury tool uh, which is used by Wiglas Monuments, but also many other photo campaigns. And then the central notices, which are the primary means of outreach uh, for the ca campaign. And of course, the main work with the international jury and winners, uh, then announcing the international winners. So that's what we, uh, that's with sort of the broad the, the global structures that help national teams and other entities to smoothly run their campaigns. Uh, so the national teams just set up things on common, such as the landing page and uh, lists of monuments. Uh, you can you could also be data if you have the bandwidth and outreach at national level, uh, securing funding for national prizes and the national jury and the winners. So that's how the role, the roles and responsibilities. And then this might be flexible. Like uh, some national teams can also help with some of the international tasks. Uh, and if you're interested, you can always uh, join the international team. So that's broadly the responsibilities. Um, coming to the timeline. We have this right now. We are in a preparation phase with setting up different things, getting the required funding, uh, and all those things. Some things happen prior to this, but this is like, where most of the preparation happens. And uh, during September to October, we have the national competitions. Um, some are different countries do it different way, but and then we have the international jury submission deadline, which is fifth December. Um, this is where this is how the federated model works. So the national teams have their own national juries uh, get the top ten national winners. So that there are forty countries participating in the year, we have ten from each. So four running majors are taken into the international jury, of which again then we run the international jury uh, and the international winners. Suppose that. Uh, more of the logistics of the price distribution and uh, reporting and exp uh, all the things. So that's probably the timeline uh, of how it looks. So now let's see how uh, if you're a new com like a new team or a new camp new uh, country that wants to participate, 
Let's see how you can get started. So one of the first things that you'll need is a team. You need a team of at least three people to uh, keep things running smoothly. Oftentimes, sometimes we, we have instances where people, there's one member or there are two people, but it's good to have three so that the burden is not too much on one or two of the organizers. Uh, so you can share the responsibilities. So just coordinating the work at large, large and then someone for outreach and um, doing setting up things on commons and one person to coordinate the jury. Those are the three broad areas. Uh, you can have more things that, like, uh, but since you're getting started, these are some of the basics. And again, what I'm I want to stress that these are the basics that are required to set up. Uh, but you can always do more, and yeah, it's. it's uh, limitless of what you can do in terms of outreach or other things that you want what want to experiment with. Uh, some of the basic pages that are required on Commons are the landing page. That's where, whenever you have the central notice banners running across Wikimedia projects, or whenever a user clicks that, they'll land on your page. Again, we have some suggested designs for the landing page, but you're free to experiment and design your own landing pages. Uh, set up the basic category structure to gather the images you know, uh, do some maintenance if necessary, and provide translations for the central notice banner and the upload wizard if it's a, if it's not in English. Uh, and if you have other primary language in your country, you can provide translations for that. And then we have, uh, so we were talking about Wikilos monuments being low barrier, and one of the primary reasons why it's low barrier is of course, it's easy. photo uploading is easy, but we also make it more easier by having lists of monuments uh, where participant can get a click, click on one of the monument and upload a picture, and all the details will be autofilled uh, in the wizard. So it offsets a lot of uh, work of like entering details manually, so that helps newcomers make this more exciting. Uh, if you don't have a list already, you could some of the sources you could look for is you could look for if your government, most of the governments have a cultural heritage department, uh, also you can look up uh, on their site if they have a list of monuments for your country. Uh, it can also be some other non-governmental organizations, um, such as European might have, might have some lists. Any other, like other countries, other organizations in your country, uh, which might publish this. It can also be other some sort of trustworthy source. Uh, it can be a news agency that publishes the list, some research uh, researcher who publishes the, the, these lists. So it can be any source, any curated source that is fine. Uh, and you can take those lists and put them on Wikimedia Commons, um, and we can also help you with putting that set up. And then th there's a timeline. Uh, there's not much work to do here, but there's a small decision that you need to take whether you want to organize the campaign in September or October. Uh, that's totally fine, but just try to remember that it, you can only have 30 days uh, in either of those months, whether it's September or October. And once you do that, accordingly, you can run the jury and submit the winners by 5th of December. So the jury, uh, for the jury, it is important to have at least three jurors, and it is mandatory to have three jurors because one person it can be biased, it can be, the, the results can be biased. If it's just one person, but two people, it's hard to break vote if there's a if there's a tie. And so three is a good number to start with. You can, have, you can always have more, but three is minimum. Uh, you can use the montage tool, which is used, uh, it has a fairly simple user interface uh, where you can vote on an image and tally all the results at the end to find the top uh, winning images. And we can have three to five rounds, uh, some initial filtering, um, more detailed voting, and the final top winning. And you can have more rounds if you have more images. So that's broadly the jury. Um, the international team also helps with setting up the montage uh, for the campaigns every year. Uh, and of course, once the jury is over, you will come to the prizes. Um, you can have your free, again, this is up to the national teams to choose how many they want to give the prizes. It can be one to five or ten or maybe other kind different like special categories uh you can choose that uh the funding of the prizes and also other outreach activities you might have you can do micro grants which is which does is by the international team um it's fairly simple if you if your budget is low and you want to have 
a lightweight process. Uh, you can do micro grants. You can apply for a micro grant uh, from the, the international team. But if you have more budget or more prizes or outreach activities that won't fit this budget, you can always apply to the Wikimedia Foundation's uh, rapid funds. There might also be these are the two mainstream like primary sources, but you can also try with other affiliates if they are in your region if they already have annual plan and they're able to do some fund funding to your activities. And finally, that's those are the five steps that are basics of required to keep things running. But you can also do more outreach. Um, for example, notice banners are there by default; they are they're run by the uh, teams. But you can also do social media promotions, uh, have you know, paid uh, promotions, and have a budget for it. Uh, you can also do activities such as photo walks. Uh, you might have heard of it. The group of people gather; they just go around the city, photograph things, and upload them to Wikilos monuments uh, and Wikimedia Commons as part of Wikilos monuments. And you can also do workshops uh, for newcomers. So this is just some initial ideas. Again, you can always do more uh, and have more ideas if you always welcome to try it out. Uh, and you can also always reach out to international team or other national organizers if you need any support or help with uh, this thing set up. So just to recap, uh, if you're a new team, new country, these are the basics that you need to cover up a uh, team, have a list of monuments, decide on the timeline, or get gather a jury, see how much you want to give the prizes and secure funding for them, and then do the necessary outreach to increase participation. Uh, we'll take questions uh, at the end, like we, we have a, a slot at the end to take questions. Uh, yeah, so these are, and thank you very much for um, attending the session. And yeah, you can always reach out to these through these channels if you want to contact the national, international team here. Uh, you can also post on the public list where you'll also have other national organizations who would be happy to help and share their ideas with you. Um, and these are our social media channels if you want to follow. Um, yeah, that's it about the Glossal Monuments, uh, just the basics. And we also have a session. Um, just to remind you, if you would be interested, we also have a session about in improving diversity, equity, and inclusion in Wikileaks monuments, and also the photographic campaigns, which is the research that we facilitated last year with the help of an external researcher. Um, it's happening on 14th August from 8.15 to 8.50 UTC. You can see it on the community program as well if you're interested in that. Great. Uh, thank you, and we can take any questions we have. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching our video. Um, I would have actually expected Krishna to be here with me. I'm Seal, I'm um, a Wikimedian from the Netherlands um, and on the international team since last year. Um, Krishna apparently has some troubles with joining us today, um, but he'll be there he is. Yes, we can. Um, Krishna? Yes you, yes, you are. We can hear you. Um, there, there's, there's a question that was raised during the video. Um, what are some monuments that you are, that are most exciting to you? Could you share something on the topic? Uh, I don't have one monument that's most uh, exciting. I mean, I've some of the monuments that I like in India are, uh, are for example, the Red Fort. And I, I, I like forts mostly because there's, I think, a lot to explore uh, in forts. So, yeah, I think that the category of forts um, is what I like the most. But I think that's more of a personal. 
Thanks. So, so for me, actually, in Wikilos monuments, it's not specifically the monument, but it is about um, movement in the image, and it's um, uh, how um, an image or, or a monument is still used or, or not used, maybe even. So, in its in its um, environment, to, to see all the surroundings, how, what is it now? What does it mean to the people living there? Yeah. Uh, so this, um, see, you might also be able to answer this better, but uh, I think this depends on the country and the number of images that you might receive. Uh, so generally, we have three to five rounds. The first round is first rounds we have more time because you have to we might have to filter out a lot of images uh the sec, like the more the more advanced rounds that you go to uh the time commitment may less so i think anywhere between three to five uh hours a week for like a couple of months i think that uh, average commitment and again this depends on the number of images that you might receive for your country I, I think you're very much correct. It, it also depends if you use uh, the jury tool of montage that was actually mentioned um, by um, uh, Lodewijk, Effie's Anders, in uh, in the chat. Um, but you, there, there are different tools out there and you can do it um, old fashioned way and just collecting them um, uh, in a category uh, that the uh, jury will go through. Um, but the jury has time until um, the 5th of uh, December this year um, to uh, come to that final top 10 that will be uh, given to the Wikilos Monuments International Jury. So it, it depends. The same question for the local team. What is expected time investment for a local team? What is your experience um, in that, Krishna? The campaign running, uh, I think if you have, again, a team of three to five uh, like organizers in your country and that anywhere between five hours uh, to 10 hours, five to eight hours a week. Uh, and this might spike in some, like if it's, a, if it's the peak hours of the peak weeks of the campaign, it can go as high as 10 hours per week. Um, but it's generally, if you have, like that's what I, what I was mentioning also in the presentation, if you have uh, at, le at least three to five members, if, you, if especially if you're in a new country that is participating or a new team, you could share that burden with different uh, organizers. So, yeah, and I would say anywhere between three, five, and eight, depending on the time of the campaign and how many members do you have on your team. Yeah, I, I, I can agree. And also, it, it depends. The first year, you might want to take some more time um, because in the next years, you'll have all that work already prepared, you'll have the lists on, on, on um, either Wikipedia or Wikidata. Um, so everything is available for you already. Um, that first year, it might take some more time, um, but we're happy uh, as the international team, we're happy to help you. And um, as long as you have volunteers um, and you have a, a, a nice team and you can work together, uh, we can, we can we can make this work. Ah. Krishna, again, a very nice question, I think. Do the sources for the monument list, do they have to be um, published? Or could it be um, just a, a Google Drive document that people use uh, as, as a source for their lists of monuments? Yeah, I think that's an uh, interesting question. I think that's uh, always that always comes up. And there's also another question. Uh, I'm seeing it on the Etherpad about 
if we should only use government sources or if we can use more sources. So it doesn't necessarily need to be government sources always. You could use a combination of the government sources and maybe if there's an NGO which publishes a heritage organization which verifies the monuments and they publish a curated list, those can also be used. Um, or if it's also a trustworthy, um, if it's a trustworthy source or something such as, but yeah, that is just me to make sure that there's no uh, overlap or also make sure that the lists are not biased uh, to a certain group of monuments. Sometimes we see in some countries this issue, this issue of uh, certain lists are biased towards certain colonial monuments or other groups, uh, X, Y, Z things. If, if it can also be a Google Drive document, I don't have like a perfect answer for that. Uh, it, if you, I mean, we don't suggest that you curate that list uh, because it you might miss on some monuments and uh, it, it's hard to verify what's the monument and what's not. Uh, maybe you can, yeah, it's, it's good to have if it's a published source and if it's uh, more like a peer reviewed source that's uh, being used. Yeah, but the, the list itself does not have to be published online somewhere else as long as you have um, the list that is um, by some official um, organization, it's it's okay, right? Yeah, yeah. As long as it's from uh, like official, I mean, we we can be flexible with both official. It can be a organization, can be a government uh, organization. Um, yeah, but it's some sort of peer, like it's reviewed uh, by someone and who verifies that there these are monuments. Yeah. Okay. Um, question um, uh, from uh, about the chapters and um, organizing Wikilos monuments. Um, if there is a chapter in your country, um, do they have to be there when you, as a volunteer, as a Wikimedia volunteer, decide you want to organize Wikilos monuments, or can you just organize? We can lost monuments um, with a group of friends, we can meet other comedians from your country. Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. It doesn't necessarily need to be the chapter or the official affiliate always. If, I mean, if they are interested to organize, that's great. Uh, but it can also be other volunteers who are organizing and they can also seek support from the chapter if the chapter is not, uh, if the chapter or the affiliate is not ready to take up the full lead on the campaign. It's just like it's all uh, I think it would be good to just make sure that they're informed and they don't have any like don't be causing any conflicts there. So yeah, if they're happy uh if they're not taking up the campaign this year, I think other volunteers can always um run the campaign. Yeah, I I agree. Chapters have a lot to do and if your 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 local chapter is um does not have the bandwidth to support you and you think this is very important, then, then please just go ahead and, and organize um, uh, Wikilos Monuments, um, I think. Yeah. Do we have documentation about what is needed from a national organizer to organize Wikilos Monuments? Do we have any materials that people can use for support in helping Organize Wikilos monuments. Uh, there is a link on Commons uh, where, like, it has some basic information such as where to get the landing page, where to put up the translation for upload wizard and the central notice. Uh, I don't have the link handy right now, but I, uh, I I'll share on chat before the session ends. I have it open. Wait, then you can share. Yep, this is the link uh, Krishna was talking about. Um, in, indeed, there are a few red links yet, but also as an international team, we're still um, getting organized and getting ready um, for the new year. But at least this basic page, and it's almost the same as the 2021 page. Um, there, there are not a lot of differences that we have uh, for 2022. Um, 
in comparison to last year. Um, um, a um, question that might be more difficult to answer um, is what are the steps to improve the integration of Wikiloss monuments and Wikidata, Wikidata, sorry. Oh, I, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not the best person to answer that, uh, but if someone is interested, maybe we can connect with whoever is currently working on in that area. Yeah, I, the, um, so Wiki, Wikimedia Sweden is um, working uh, on Wikilos monuments and Wikidata, um, but and and I am hoping there will be more information about that before we start on the first of September. Uh, remember, Wikimania Wiki uh, Lost Monuments runs from the first of September until the thirty first of October, and you're free to choose. Um, whichever 30 to 31 days within that time period suits your um, your competition, your national competition, the best. So um, there is leeway in that um, in that planning in that time. Um, who can apply for the grants? So, it, so there, uh, I spoke about a couple of types of, like a couple of sources of um, sources where you can apply for a grant. One is with the Wikilos Monuments International team. Uh, if you're if you're the team that is organizing Wikilos Monuments in your country, and if your request is below 500 US dollars, then uh, you're eligible for to get the micro grant with us. Um, if if you're going for a Wikimedia Foundation grant, uh, they have their own guidelines. Uh, with to grants and if you have any previous record of, uh, like if you're receiving the previous funds. Uh, but I think the basic ones are you need to be a team, like a team which is organizing Wikilos Monuments and be in community good standing that is not blogged anywhere or have some sort of uh, bans. And uh, I think also not any outstanding reports with the previous grants that you have taken from the Community Foundation. I think that is correct. Um, is the criteria of monument age still used this year? I don't. I don't remember. Don't recall us having a criteria for monument age. Do we? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. Is, we, I, I, we, I, mean, I don't remember having used such a guideline. No, I think we don't look at how old the monument is as long as it's um, recognized as a monument by um, an official organization. You're, you're okay. They, they're suitable monuments to be um, uh, photographed for the competition. Um, do we have any more questions? Uh, I think there is one. When we have monuments on National Heritage List, one is built, one and isn't our both eligible for international judging. I don't completely. The latest one from. Uh, do you see any more questions? I, I don't. I see the chat is still ongoing, so I'm just gonna, maybe we can pause uh, for a bit. And because uh, we, we still have four minutes according to my counter in feed loop. So maybe two more questions.
Okay. Um, because of the, the two minute lag that we have um, with Feedloop and YouTube, we might want to um, come to a close uh, because I think we will both be around uh, Wikimania in uh, several sessions. There's all, also going to be the diversity, equity and inclusion session on Sunday morning, uh, talking about um, inclusion in Wikilos monuments and, and also other photo competitions. Um, and I think we'll be around for more questions and more answers, right, Krishna? Yes, yeah, I'm around and uh, I'm also, yeah, I'll also quickly share the contact email for if you want to reach out to the team. Yep. Okay. I think that's it from our side. Thanks a lot. Have a good Wikimania, everyone. Thank you.